and 10 losing kids. This seems to be the most popular theory about why William Afton started his whole killing spree thing, because seemingly, he didn't kill anyone until after Elizabeth and Crying Child died at the hands of the various animatronics. But there are those who also treat this as a proven fact. But honestly, this is proven to not be the case. Okay, It is impossible for William to be a psychotic killer because his kids died. As we learned from FNAF AR's Faz Facts, William made the Funtime animatronics around the same time as the Springlock animatronics. So, from day one, he made the robots that were intended to kill. Plus, if you want to ignore FNAF AR's Faz Facts entirely, the fact that Elizabeth and Crying Child got killed by animatronics that were designed to kill, hence why they were killed by them, even disproves that idea before FNAF AR. So, while it would make sense, it's not truly the case. And some of these other explanations may end up making more sense. Although, to be frank, I don't think that anyone actually knows the real origin. Not even Scott Coffin. And at 9, divorce. Another popular reason is possibly because William's wife left him, and that drove him crazy. I mean, being a single dad to three kids would already be pretty tough, but maybe this idea goes beyond this. A lot of people also assume that William killed his wife, considering how she's not around, and nobody really ever mentions her. This honestly could be an option, but only because we know so little about the home life that William had before the games. Or even before 1983 when we see the sister location 8-bit scenes. So theories about this are entirely plausible, even if they just rely on human nature nature rather than evidence present within the games. I mean, these are human characters after all. They don't have as much meat to them as the theories involving info from the games or even from the books, but it's still interesting to see the possibilities like this. I mean, like, did William get divorced? Was his wife his first victim? Who knows? Probably not even Scott. Honestly, I, I doubt William's motivation is something that like he thought of when he was throwing out the last game, when he thought that the game would end up failing, yet here we are, nine games and like eight years later, almost. And it ain't phone guy. Hold on, okay. Okay, hold on. Hear me out. I think that there is still the possibility, slight, slight, slight chance that despite what Scott might have said, that the phone guy could still be the killer. Now, this is probably almost definitely not the case. This is a list about speculating, right? Well, what if William is indeed the one recording these training tapes, and what we hear is what we see play out in FNAF 3's minigames? I mean, we thought that this was possible before, but then when they gave him a name, we figured that they were different people. But maybe they also gave us Phone Guy's name without us knowing it. I mean, what other reason would he have to be in Ultimate Custom Night? Unless the vengeful spirit heard the recordings and knew what Phone Guy sounded like? Plus, the animatronics smashing on the door could just be when William goes to disassemble them, which accidentally releases their spirits. But the tape's cut off before he ends up getting spring-locked. Because, like, I don't know about you, but if I saw the ghosts of my victims, I wouldn't think like, oh sh I need to vlog this. We, we have two different versions of Afton in Ultimate Custom Night already, so maybe there is a secret third version, aside from the one we play as at least. And it's 7 FNAF 3. Okay, look, this... This, the, the last few numbers may seem to make this not make sense, but l listen, okay? Afton, in a sense, does die in FNAF 3, since this was meant to be the final game in the series until the fans were disappointed with the main jump scare, okay? So, prior to Scott releasing FNAF 4, William Afton was canonically dead and the series was over. But after that, things were more complicated than they ever had been before. Uh, and many people do consider Afton dead after getting springlocked, like I said, which isn't true, since he was being kept alive by the one you should not have killed. AKA crying child. Oh, yeah, you're gonna get mad at me, but it's true. But technically speaking, until the continuation of the story between the, t the time of FNAF 3's release and the day before FNAF 4's release, William was dead. Oh, wait a second. Uh, he shows up in the final newspaper in the background, doesn't he? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe he was never supposed to be dead, uh, but the series was supposed to be. So, as far as I'm concerned, if the series dies, so does the character. And it, it would have stayed that way, too, if it weren't for you meddling kids and your damn animatronics. Afton would have been dead in the Spring Bonnie suit eventually. Okay, never being possessed by his son because he wasn't added. He would have eventually ended up shutting down just due to the wear of the animatronic since Henry wouldn't have kept setting fires that would remove all the rust and whatnot. At least I think that's how it would work. And eventually he'd have he'd have been forgotten when Poppy Playtime came out. So yeah, this counts for me. And it's six glitch trap. Currently, post-true security breach ending, there seem to be two instances of Afton roaming the halls of the Pizzaplex. Or I guess, one roaming and one trapped in a giant ghost of animatronics past blob. So, this really begs a philosophical question. Is Glitch Trap truly an instance of William Afton? Because if it is, then everything we should know about the series and how possession works in the FNAF universe is wrong. Currently, from what we've established in this universe, there are two main ways to actually maintain life 
after what should have been death in this FNAF world, universe, whatever. Or at least in the games, that th there's two, okay? The books also have human robots, but that hasn't been proven canonical yet. The games have Remnant and Possession, which are connected but aren't the same thing. Remnant is seemingly a byproduct of Possession, being a combination of metal and soul, showcased in the books as the five endoskeletons of the original Freddy's animatronics, possessed by the original Missing Children's Incident victims, uh, and then Possession comes before that. But Afton wasn't possessing anything, he was being possessed. And Glitch Trap is an intentional feature within FNAF VR, along with also being a virus, or I guess the virus I guess took the form of the main antagonist that was meant to be in the VR game. But it also takes control over Vanessa. The only explanation here is that either Vanessa is a robot, but then again if she is then why is she looking at herself in the rooftop ending if she doesn't have a soul because she is a robot. So maybe this needs its own video, um, maybe it doesn't, I don't know, let me know. Halfway through in at number 5, Henry. In the case of William Afton, his first victim was the daughter of his longtime business partner Henry, which is hella messed up uh, because she was 3 at the time, that time being 1980. And this is also the year that Afton's life starts going downhill in the worst ways possible. But he starts off killing kids and then sticks with that MO throughout the rest of his criminal career. But the fact that his first victim was someone who trusted him, who didn't exactly suspect him even though her father did, is something that even I fear and I'm not even a parent. So I can only imagine how this must have felt for Henry. And if that was me, I'd be doing a lot more than burning down restaurants in an attempt to put William down, okay? I'd be doing it with myself with my bare hands. A Especially if he had killed my daughter when she was only three years old, okay? Afton got lucky that Henry didn't have more initiative in my mind, okay? I have no idea why he didn't because I'd rather go to jail for killing the man that killed my daughter than chase him for 50 years trying to burn him to the ground. But like, come on, okay? Who would really blame him too? Afton got so lucky that Henry is just a little who wants to use fire to stop him, okay? I wouldn't care about going to prison if Afton had killed my kid. No, no chance in hell, especially when she was that young, I would have choked him out with my bare hands and wrenched his neck. Also, hello to the jury. In it for zombie. There's also the possibility that Afton has been a zombie this entire time, and honestly, that makes me extremely angry. I'm masking it, though. Because out of all the things that the FNAF series has done, this would be the cheapest and the worst. Forget dream theory, forget this all being a storybook, forget everything else. This would be the dumbest thing that FNAF could do, since it would basically come out of nowhere, okay? People are already think that Michael is a zombie after getting energy shoved into him, but zombies aren't purple, guys, okay? And then, making that into yet another, like, father-like son parallel would be so stupid and such a horrible retcon that it would be worse than it all being a dream, especially after establishing that Afton was being possessed prior to the spring locking, which would most likely have ended up with his death, and if he was made into a zombie, that would probably be his death point, okay? It would just change too much about the series for things to make sense, and and would probably result in a whole lot of rage from the community. Or at least, I, I hope everyone would find this stupid enough to get mad at, because I would, and I want to be validated. Getting close to the end, and in number three, Dream Theory. There is also the possibility that none of this was real, and that everything is actually a dream, which kind of negates the whole origin story thing, because in a dream, we don't need to worry about origin stories. We just worry about what's happening in the present moment. I mean, dreaming about yourself having a nightmare is a whole other level of meta, like Inception style, but also not really, because in this scenario, Crying Child would actually be dreaming about dreaming, whereas in Inception, they don't know that any of those dreams are actually dreams. It's also interesting since if Crying Child is dreaming all of this, he dreams that he also died, but then somehow the dream continues past that, which I've never had happen before. If I die in a dream, I wake up, which in my opinion makes more of a case for him being the vengeful spirit, but I don't like dream theory because it feels cheap, so I'm not even going to entertain the thought of it any more than I have to. If dream theory is correct, which seems seems to be no longer the case, but maybe it was intended beforehand, then the origin of William is totally obsolete. So, um, let's hope it's not dream theory. But ultimately, in a number two, time loop. Could Afton be stuck in a Groundhog Day-like scenario? Instead of a day, it's however many years. I mean, this one is absolutely wild and 100% guaranteed not to be the case. But ever since time travel was introduced into the series, it's a whole other thing now. <laughs> Literally, the first Fazbear Frights book had to do us like that. Anyway, what if William actually started living
living his life on repeat, the same thing over and over. That would drive anyone crazy. I mean, like, just look at what happened to Bill Murray. But if we ended up thinking about it, if William didn't think that there were consequences and then he went berserk, maybe he started offing people because he could, but then the cycle broke. It's absolutely ridiculous and, again, 100% not the case. But it's pretty interesting to consider. I mean, the time traveling ball pit had the golden Bonnie and was introduced for a reason, right? Maybe it's to show that Afton is all about time travel or something along those lines. Again, no way this is real, so don't yell at me in the comments. It's a stupid idea, but it's fun to think about nonetheless. And finally, in a number one, psychopath. There's also the classic reason that there is no reason and that William is just your typical run of the mill psychopath who has no remorse for any of his actions. Now, the vengeful spirit referred to as the one you should not have killed seems to prevent this theory from being true, since if he had no remorse, nobody would be considered the one you should not have killed. But remember that actually, they named themselves. William didn't actually name them because the manifestations in his head were made by this vengeful spirit who wanted him to suffer. So, William might not have considered them, whether it be Cassidy or Crying Child, one that he should not have killed, or at least had a hand in killing, but they could have considered it. And like, ah, you shouldn't have killed me because now I'm possessing you. Like, it's entirely plausible that William has no regrets for any of his actions, hence why he continued his killing after losing two out of his three children to it. I mean, like, he even sent Michael down there to see his sister possessing a robot who then also tried to kill him. So, I think it's safe to say that he probably doesn't care about losing people that he should love. He probably only had kids to actually seem normal, like those who are considered psychopaths or more commonly sociopaths. They do things to try and fit in, usually. In a 10 princess quest, the whole princess quest thing. Its purpose was to lock Vanny away and prevent her from regaining control of her own body. So why did William create or uh, allow for the creation of a fail safe that allows her to escape? I mean, like, sure, they didn't expect a random kid to come along, figure it out, maybe, but given the track record of Afton and his plans, you'd think that he would have smartened up after at least 50 years. I don't understand. That's like having a self-destruct button on the bomb that you wanted to make sure nobody could stop. Or if Superman had like a kill me button or just like had like a free kryptonite vending machine that he just put out in the middle of Metropolis. It's stupid. Like if you want something to work, why give it a possible way to fail? One of the dumbest things that William has ever done. But he's also so goddamn lucky that it didn't backfire canonically. Seriously, what's the point behind having a way to undo your evil plans? This could just as reasonably actually been the canon ending to the game, even though we play as a kid the size of a four year old. And the fact that it wasn't the canon ending, it's pure luck the way that that didn't happen, okay? Just like bury the third machine if you insist on doing this. In at nine, Vanessa. Possessing Vanessa itself was certainly one of the more messed up things that William did, okay? I mean, it kind of sounds weird, you know, and also extremely unrealistic. Like this guy just pops up in your VR headset then takes over your body after you collected 16 digital VHS tapes, or cassette tapes, I guess, technically. But then after he takes over your body, you end up killing for him, okay? That's messed up. And like, not even kind of, that's incredibly messed up. But also like, how? I mean like, she knows what's going on too. She actively talks in hushed tones about how she can't talk to her therapist about it. But like, Afton got lucky with specifically was that Vanessa has no willpower to actually sacrifice for the greater good, okay? I mean like, at this point, I feel like it's fairly safe to infer that Jeremy from FNAF AR didn't go crazy because he just saw a glitch trap. I think it's fairly reasonable to say that he got possessed. At this point, Tape Girl hadn't broken up glitch trap into the tapes yet, and he was probably just able to possess whoever he wanted. So if Jeremy did get possessed and the possession worked in a similar way to that it did to Vanessa, Jeremy would at times be sentient and in control of his own body. So if he knew about Glitch Trap, maybe he didn't cut his face off because he was freaking out. Maybe he did it to try to kill the monster that was inside him. And it ate Springlock suits. The Springlock suits in general are also something that William and even Henry both got extremely lucky with. Like, while Henry may not have, like, designed the Springlock suits, he certainly let Afton create them and then allowed for their use in the restaurants despite them being incredibly dangerous to employees. Only putting them out of commission when someone eventually got hurt and not actually being proactive because, you know, they are literal death machines. You make separate animatronics and then you have separate costumes, okay? That's the right move. That's the smart move. That's the safe move. But these so-called business 
businessmen thought, yeah, I'll put the safety of my employees at risk by making them wear a hot as balls suit filled with robot parts that even with the slightest bit of moisture will shoot those robotic parts right back to where your bones are. What can possibly go wrong? Like, you think that Willy Wonka has OSHA violations? Imagine FNAF's OSHA violations. Oh wait, actually, you don't have to, because we already did a whole list on that. Be sure you go check it out. But seriously, the fact that nobody sued them because they were being put in these things instead of like, you know, much safer and cheaper options of, you know, a fabric suit is insane. And it's of an accident. Now, aside from me, maybe this whole deal was an accident, right? Maybe more so than just his kids getting killed by robots intended to kill. Maybe William's real first victim wasn't Charlotte. Maybe he did kill his wife, but accidentally. Maybe they were a bit too rough, or maybe she had a condition that made her susceptible to falling or something, and William accidentally tripped her. Maybe when that happened, in whatever way it did, William saw the life leave her eyes and liked it, but then wanted to see how it would look on a kid. So he set about making robots that would help him see it. But his kids got got instead. But then he still liked the sight of it so much that he continued. Maybe he wasn't built like it, but the sight of watching someone die, maybe even his wife or lover, awakened something deep within him that then propelled him to kill. It's nothing new, it's happened to plenty of people before, but William is dangerous. He knows how to cover his tracks. Despite the absolute buffoonery of his methods, the cops were none the wiser. Or maybe he was just paying them off. In its six, demon deal. This may be because my brain is watching too much Supernatural, but the possibility does exist that in a world with possession, living corpses, sentient biological code that can possess animatronics and people, and where spirits can possess people to keep them alive to suffer, that there is in fact also a hell and demons. And if there are demons, maybe this is why William is absolutely god insane. Maybe he sold his soul to a demon so that his business would be successful. However, so that the reaper wouldn't come to collect, William decided to start making sacrifices. Or maybe it was demanded of him as part of his deal or something. Maybe the demon he sold his soul to wanted a little snack every once in a while, you know, some baby back ribs. Or maybe, due to this deal, he seeked out getting possessed by a vengeful spirit so that he wouldn't actually be able to be sent to hell. Or maybe that was only a theory, but he was willing to try anything in order to keep himself from eternal damnation. Just an idea. I mean, it's it's definitely unlikely, probably like 99% not the case, but it's still interesting. And at four, sacrifice. Maybe this isn't about fan art or a demon deal at all. Maybe Afton is just a religious man who worships the old gods, more specifically, the dark ones, and believes, like some ancient cultures, that sacrifice is the key to a peaceful and long life. I mean, in the end, if this is the case, he wasn't wrong. His misdeeds end up getting him possessed, which allows him to live for much longer than he should have without food or water, after being spring-locked for 30 years years, and through multiple fires. I mean, if this is his motivation, this would absolutely make sense to him and actually to him be proven true. Like, maybe he doesn't know that his body is being possessed, at least until Ultimate Custom Night when the Vengeful Spirit reveals himself. Maybe until that point, he genuinely thought that he was being kept alive by the gods. Hell, maybe even after the one you should not have killed reveals himself, he's still thinking that it's one of the gods instead of one of his victims. Crazy people believe crazy things, right? So, who knows? Maybe Afton just thinks he's doing the Dark Lord's bidding in exchange for eternal life, or maybe an end to his suffering after losing his wife, or something like that, okay? There are many explanations, although I doubt that this one is very likely. I still like talking about it. It's fun to explore. Getting close to the end, in number three, first victim. They say that a killer's first victim is the most important, since it might indicate what really got them to start killing, or other psychological clues that they can use to predict his next moves. But in the case of William Afton, his first victim was the daughter of his longtime business partner, Henry, which is hella messed up, because she was three at the time. And while we may have talked about how Henry dropped the ball before. This was the year that Afton's life started going downhill in the worst of ways. Cause like he started killing off kids and then he sticks with that MO for throughout the rest of the criminal career. Then like he also loses his kids after that. But the fact that his first victim was someone who trusted him, who didn't really suspect him of anything, even though her father did, is something that I fear. And finally, and at number one, the palladium rule. I will stand by this until the day I die. And you know what? I was call I used to call it the platinum rule, but now it's the Palladium rule because it's a meme and I love it. The most ridiculous but luckiest thing that has ever happened in FNAF was the fact that William Afton killed people in his own place of business and then didn't get caught. I don't know if this was always his intention, but like who the absolute living hell would think that this is a good idea? Seriously, even if it's a TV show, okay, How I Met Your Mother does have some good lessons. One of those is Barney's platinum rule, which is if you have to see the person every day because you work with them or they live in an apartment next door to you, okay, don't engage in some form of relationship, okay, because come a breakup, which is 
is statistically probable, it just results in awkwardness and pain. And while this isn't the exact same thing, you are at this building all the time. Your name is a part of the company, so why would you think that this is a good idea? Literally go anywhere else, okay? You ended up even getting banned while there was an investigation underway. I don't get it. In a tense spring lock. A lot of people still think that Afton died while being springlocked in FNAF 3. And honestly, uh, when the game came out, this was actually seemingly correct. I mean, we never really saw Afton go limp like he truly died, but for all intents and purposes, Afton was dead in FNAF 3. But then, as more games came out and more was added to the story and to the lore, Afton was shown to, to never have died in the game, since, you know, he was, as we now know, being kept alive by the one you should not have killed, who was possessing him as an individual and was keeping him alive so that he could continue to suffer for all of his crimes. So honestly, before William even started started his whole always coming back thing, he came back from the dead, at least technically speaking, which I still think is damn impressive, okay? I haven't died before, even technically, uh, unless we count like on the inside or my dreams, but hey, we, we don't need to talk about that at the start of a video, right? And a nine explosion. Okay, so, well, physically speaking, uh, William dies in the man in room 1280, the third story from the fifth Fazbear Frights book. Quite extravagantly, might I add, exploding into a pile of mush right before a Pastor's eyes, but like, how would that have been possible? How could William just have exploded like that? It's it's not something that you you really think about. Um, and I think I have an explanation, but it's certainly a, a bit more interesting than spontaneous combustion. William knew about possession and how it works. Okay, he he knew about agony and how his daughter got scooped and his son was crunched. So what if he tried to ensure his own survival by intentionally causing himself extreme agony, injecting or installing some form of explosive that, when triggered or when in the vicinity of a Fazbear warehouse or trigger device would cause him to explode violently from the inside out, creating what is possibly one of the most agonizing ways to die, even in the FNAF series. I mean, this guy was absolutely mental, okay? Even potentially injecting himself with molten soul metal remnant in an effort to keep himself alive. So for me, it isn't out of the question that William inserted an explosive device into himself. But considering all that comes after this, glitch trap and whatnot, uh, and the fact that burn trap still has William's body inside, I don't think that this one is really canon. And I don't think that this actually caused William to die. And if you're enjoying this video, guys, hit like, okay? It really helps us out, especially with the algorithm almighty, uh, praise be its name. Name. Um, so yeah, did you do it? Why the heck not? Okay, do it now, babe, please. In at eight, second spring lock. I, I say second, even though technically Afton's second trapping was in the books, but also some may not consider that possible in the main series, but you know what? In the context of the number, it makes sense. So, could William have suffered a spring lock failure before getting trapped in the spring bonnie suit like we see in FNAF 3? It's possible. Um, explains why I say again as well, because, well, it would have it been first, but it it's again on this list. Since William is described to have scars that are consistent with a spring lock failure in the novels before becoming Springtrap. So, could it have happened in the games? Uh, maybe. We don't really see William in a visual sense in the games, aside from him being purple. So, I don't know. Maybe William was the reason the spring lock suits were retired in the first place, since we hear of an unfortunate incident at the sister location. So, is that unfortunate incident William? There are plenty of people um, that it could be, none of which are named, but William having to deal with his own injury would certainly get them put out of commission for a time, but with William then continuing to use the suit to, to kill people and then putting it on again like we see in the FNAF 3 cutscene suggests that this scenario is unlikely, but you know what, it's still possible, so it's still a possible death. And it's Seven calling the cops. Let's look at this logically, alright? Henry knew what was going on with Afton, and that Afton had some shady scenarios cooking in his brain. So, if he knew that this man was up to no good, and he was fearing for his daughter's safety, why didn't he make the call to the police and be like, Hey man, so uh, this William Afton guy is like thinking about killing kids, and probably is the one that's been killing the kids that you're looking for. Like, I mean, sure, maybe you didn't have proof, but you could have certainly tipped them off, and then they could have, you know, found the proof. Come on, they could at least keep a closer eye on him, but you didn't. And instead, you did a whole load of other 
that in reality didn't do anything to stop William. I mean, you did one thing that put him out of commission for like 30 years, but again, that was only 30 years. You could have stopped him. You could have actually stopped him in his tracks, but instead you chose to keep your mouth shut. That is Afton's plot armor working overtime with no extra pay. And at six, leave it to fate. FNAF 6 was supposed to be the end of the Afton story. I was so looking forward to it. That's what Henry sets out to do in this game. Make sure that nobody remembered what happened there. However, this also figured that the first fire didn't work, so a second one surely will. And in fact, he was so confident in this plan for whatever goddamn reason that he actually let himself die in the process to leave nobody remembering what happened. But he didn't think that even if himself, William, and all their kids are dead, the parents of the victims still know. And as we learn from Security Breach in the duffel bags, there are other parents who remember it too. Like, it's a whole thing in the FNAF universe. They cite the missing children from the Pizza Plex as happening again. If Henry had stuck around to see if the job was really done, maybe William wouldn't have been able to possess Vanny and come back yet again and just kill more people. Henry should have lit the place up, smashed everything that survived, and then maybe you could have offed yourself. But at least make sure the job is done first. Halfway through into number five, worst Easter ever. Okay, from an in-universe perspective, in Security Breach, Vanny brought back seemingly this Earth's most prolific killer. But from a story perspective, it also kinda comes out of nowhere and feels forced. And in a game sense, he also just looks terrifying and then sends all the broken animatronics after us. And lore-wise, Afton's back again. However, he's also not entirely back this time, considering how this version actually seems to finally be dead, however only functional because maybe the coded version of Afton's consciousness is inside the animatronic. No matter what, this shouldn't have worked. He shouldn't have been able to have a sentient code form possessed Vanny, but then also be able to be present in his actual body. Like what? Unless this entire time after getting springlocked, his consciousness was instantly turned into a code and that was then controlling the spring trap suit in a way I guess would make sense. I mean it would make a lot more sense than him being possessed by the spirit of his son. But from everything we've gotten, including Ultimate Custom Night and the man in room 1280, he was possessed, but to be kept alive so he could keep suffering, okay? Meaning that none of this should have worked. But it did, and it forced Sprung. So this absolute animatronic genius, the technician that made these suits, that handles the maintenance, and has explained to every employee that has put on one of these things, on like the proper procedure for the spring lock suits and making sure that it doesn't, you know, snap and then kill you, including the spring body suit that he uses to kill, ends up climbing inside the suit in a panic in an attempt to make himself feel more powerful. But somehow, he's so smart that he didn't notice the leak goddamn ceiling, which is already a, a health hazard, which you should have noticed beforehand. But then, this also causes the spring locks that were active to snap shut, which would have killed him. However, this lucky mother hubber somehow managed to get possessed by someone who was so pissed at him that they kept him alive through all of his supposed to be deaths because they wanted William to suffer. Did they not realize how counterintuitive that is? The man literally wants to live for Forever, and you are enabling him to do so. Old man consequences is right. Leave the demon to his demons. Rest your own soul so that Afton could finally die and then actually suffer in hell for all of eternity instead of a goddamn dream version that you made up when he was recharging underneath the pizza plex or before he showed up in FNAF 6 or whenever you were goddamn torturing him with all this fake hell you made up. God damn it! Getting close to the end in number three, FNAF 6. Could William have been dead before FNAF 6 takes place? I think it's a possibility, technically, because like, what happened to Springtrap between games to cause such horrific warps to his body? Like, sure, he was burnt in FNAF 3, but we also see him alive and not all that damaged in Sister Location's Night 7 ending cutscene. So, where did all this additional damage and warping come from? The head becomes larger somehow, and so do the feet. Uh, I don't know, okay? This genuinely doesn't make any sense. We know that they're the same person, thanks to Ultimate Custom Knight's voice lines, but I'm so confused as to what could have happened to cause this. I'm sure the extra damage comes from possibly fending off wild animals, uh, since, you know, he's still a, a body, a rotting corpse that would attract scavengers. So how did the head of the suit get bigger? It's not like it evolved. It's not like it leveled up like freaking Magikarp from punching all these wolves. My only guess is that, like, 
Will William either broke into a Fazbear warehouse and tried to like reassemble himself, or I don't know, maybe the the gases from an actual decaying corpse, if he was dead prior to this, caused the head to expand. But even that wouldn't make sense. Um, I don't know. We see so much damage. Maybe a cor maybe being a corpse just caused the suit to mess up because Scott was like, "That's what I want." But ultimately, into number two, the blob. The true ending of FNAF Security Breach is seemingly one of the most interesting parts of the game because it contains a whole load of little things to watch out for. It also actually ends the game, which at this point I think is probably the best thing. After making our way into Burn Trap's area, Freddy is going to be taken over by Athens' newest form, and then it's up to Gregory to defeat him by using three monitors with corresponding buttons that activate fire and seemingly trigger his weakness, which is a whole other story. Players, you, you need to avoid the animatronics that come out after you, um, but you can use doors to lock him out, you can use Freddy to scare him off, there's a lot that you can do. And then, when Burn Trap is finally burned even more, I guess at this point he's he's just trap because like in math it cancels out, right? Uh, the blob, which was like a tentacle monster thing that was attacking us, then attacks B Burn Trap, William, and then tries to make sure he doesn't get free. Okay, then we run away. Um, but my question is, does the blob actually kill William? That I don't know. Like there are death animations in the game files, apparently, allegedly. I haven't seen them, um, but they weren't used, so we can't really consider that canon. Plus, the whole I always come back thing is definitely. A annoying and I thought it would have ended before this game, but uh clearly not so I don't know anymore Just God for fuck's sakes, please let William be dead and finally in at number one never died Currently, what we know about Remnant and Agony tells us that to destroy it properly, we need to burn it. Hence why there are so many damn fires in this series. FNAF 3, 6, and Security Breach all end with something or someone getting burned. FNAF 3's fire was all about dealing with Springtrap. FNAF 6 was about putting everyone who knew about the atrocities to rest. And then in FNAF 9, we burned Burn Trap multiple times to try to get him to stop possessing Freddy. And then it's all because Henry learned that the only way to destroy Remnant and put these things to rest was through fire. But how? how is that really how like, is that really the thing? Because, like, all three fires haven't really done anything. They haven't done <laughs> We've been told that fire is the only thing hot enough to burn off the remnant, but it's also been described as remnant liquid metal. So, if the soul-infused metal can become a liquid, then how is it possible to just burn off the soul part? That's not how metallurgy works. I think it's metallurgy. I don't know. That's not how things work, okay? That's not how the universe works. Dr. Talbert is lying, he's William, all right? There's a whole video on it, go check it out, all right? William is, is lying, he's, he made up the fire thing so he couldn't be killed.